In the previous videos, we familiarized ourselves with the Monte Carlo part. So now let's talk about the Markov chain part, which is actually a really cool idea on how to generate samples from complicated multidimensional distributions kind of efficiently. So what is a Markov chain? Uh, imagine a frog which is which sits on a water lily, and uh, this frog have kind of uh, discrete time. So at each time step, and there are like at each second, for example, it makes a decision whether to stay on its current lily or to jump to the other one. And its decisions are kind of predefined in a probabilistic way. So if it's right now on the left water lily, it will stay there with probability point three and will move with probability 0.7. And if it's on the right one, it will stay or move with probability 0.5, for example. Now we can say that we have kind of a dynamic system, which has a state. So the state will show us where the frog is now. This dynamic system, uh, it kind of uh, evolves through time, it, it's cha its state changes, and the rule, rules by which the state changes uh, are as follows. So the probability to transition from left state to left state is 0.3 and etc. So you can define uh, the behavior of your dynamic system by using these transition probabilities. So we can simulate our dynamic system. We can say that for example on the time step 1 the frog was on the left and then maybe it jumped to the right on the time step 2 and then maybe it stayed to the right then maybe it went to the left and then for example to the right. And we can write down the path uh, through the state space which our dynamic system made. So it was like left, right, right, left, right. And uh, this thing is called Markov chain because uh, the next state is kind of uh, uh, depends only on the previous state. So uh, the frog doesn't care where it was 10 time steps ago. The only thing it cares about is uh, where it is now. To make the decision, it just uh, needs to know where uh, what, what is the, uh, the state now. Okay, so we can ask ourselves a, qu a question, like with where the frog will be after ten time steps, for example. So let's say we, that we started from uh, the time step one, and the frog was on the left. So with probability one, it was uh, on the left, and with probability zero, it was on the right. What is the probability that it will be on the left or on the on the right in the time step two? Well, it's 0.3 and 0.7, right? Okay, and what about the uh, time step three? It's kind of trickier because we don't know where it was before. But using the rule of sum of probabilities, we can kind of uh, check all the possibilities for the previous state and use that to compute the next probabilities. So the rule of sum says us that the uh, st uh, the value of the state at the time step 3 equals to the value of the uh, state of the time step 3 given that at the second time step it was on the left times the probability that it was on the left on the second time, time step plus the same thing uh, considering that uh, the situation that it was on the right on the second time step and we can you know just uh, we, we know all these values because the conditional probability is just the transition probability. So the probability that the frog moves from left to right, for example. And the prior probability, probability of x2, are computed in the previous line. So it, it's what we have just computed. And we can write it down. So it will be for probability of the left in the third time step. It will be something like uh, 0.3 because uh, it's the probability of transitioning from left to left times the prior probability of uh, 0.3 so it's uh, from the previous line of the table plus the probability of uh, the prior probability of uh, being on the right in the previous time step which is 0.7 times the transition probability uh, of moving from right of from right to right which is 0.5 I'm sorry, from right to left, which is 0.5. And uh, we can write the same thing for the uh, for being at the right state in the time step 3. And we'll have some numbers like this, which are around 44 and 56. 
and we can continue this table for as long as we want and we'll found out that uh, the table kind of converged to numbers around 42 and 58. So after like 1 million steps, the probability is that the frog is on the left is almost exactly 42 and the probability that the frog is on the right is almost exactly 58. Which basically means that we, if we simulate our frog for long enough and then write down where it ended up at the 1 millionth step, then uh, we will kind of get a sample from this discrete distribution with two values. So with probability 42 we will get uh, left and with probability 58 we will get right. So let's look how it works. Say we simulate our frog for like 1 million steps and the last step was for example left. Okay, We'll write down this left and then simulate another, another <coughs> path through the state space. So gain simulation and the last state was, for example, right. We write it down and by doing this several times, we have a sample from uh, a distribution of the millionth step of our uh, dynamic system, given that the frog started on the left. And this thing will be close to the probability 42 and 58. So uh, even here we can see that uh, where we have like two out of five lefts and three out of five rights, which are close to 42 and 58. So this way we can generate, uh, it's, it's, it's a really loose way to generate samples from this discrete distribution with two values. So for, there is a much simpler way, which we have just, just discussed in the previous video. But note that this way, so build a dynamic system and simulate it and see where it end up, works even for more complicated cases. So what if you have, for example, 10 lilies or 1 billion lilies? If you want to simulate your distribution uh, by, you know, in naive way, if you have billion uh, values for in your discrete random variable, you will have to spend amount of time proportional to 1 billion to generate one sample from it. If you use this kind of idea of simulate some dynamic system and then write down the, the last position, and if you do not that many steps, like 1000, and hope that everything has converged to the true distribution, then you can uh, get a random number from this complicated discrete distribution without too much trouble of uh, the naive approach in the billion, uh, billion values example. Or maybe your frog can be even continuous and can jump from any point on your 2D plane to any other point. In this case, you will be able to generate your samples from a continuous distribution by simulating your dynamic system. So uh, the idea is that you can still sample uh, efficiently even if you have uh, this continuous uh, dynamic system by just writing down the path for this uh, 2D plane and uh, writing down the last position. So the idea of Markov chain simulation applied to uh, generating samples of random values is as follows. We have a distribution we want to sample from. It may be continuous, it may be discrete. We built a Markov chain that has this distribution, uh, so that converges to this distribution. Okay? Then we start with from any initialization, x0, and then we simulate our Markov chain for long enough, for example, for 1000 iterations. <clears throat> so we start with x0, then we generate x1 by using the transition probability, and etc. And then we hope that after 1000 steps, you will converge to the true distribution P of X because we build our Markov chain this way. And then after these 1000 steps, you can throw away the uh, first uh, 1000 uh, samples, 1000 states, and then you can start writing down the states after these 1000 steps because they all will be from, these, uh, from the distribution P of X or at least close to it if your Markov chain converge close enough. Um, okay, so this is the general idea. And in the following videos, we will discuss how to build Markov chain with this property. So how to build Markov chain that converge to the distribution you want to sample from. But let's first discuss a little bit about like whether a Markov chain converge anywhere 
Uh, so in, in which cases it does converge and which it, it doesn't. Well, the first observation here is that it, uh, the Markov chain doesn't has to converge to, to anywhere. So, for example, if you consider a, a dynamic system like this, the frog will always swap the uh, lily at each time step. And so if, if you look at the table, it will look like this. The probability of being on the left on the first time step is uh, 1, and to be on the right is 0. And then you swap things, so you are certainly will be on the right on the next time step, and then you will cer certainly be on the left on the next time step, and etc. And this thing will never converge to anything stable. So it will always swap the, the, the place. So this thing doesn't work for us. We want something that converges to some distribution. And the question of whether or not a given Markov chain is converged, uh, is, is converging to something, is actually uh, so pretty well studied. Well, first of all, we'll need a definition of what, what does it mean for a Markov chain to converge to something uh, in the mathematical terms. So this is something called a stationary distribution. And the distribution pi is called stationary for a Markov chain T if, uh, if the following equation holds, which basically says us that if you start from the distribution, distribution pi, and if you marginalize out the current position x, then you will get basically uh, the distribution over position on the next time step. And this has to be pi again. So basically, if you start from pi, if you uh, sample a state from pi, and then if you make a one just uh, one transition, uh, so one time step of the Markov chain, then the distribution you will get after that is again pi. And this uh, means that if we, uh, if we converge to, if we encounter this pi at any point of our sampling, then we will stay at it. We will not change this distribution. And there is a nice theorem that says us that if the transition probability is non-zero for any two states, so if we can jump from any state to any other one with uh, non-zero probability, then there is, exists a unique pi which is stationary. And we will converge to this pi from any starting point. So if we build a Markov chain that, um, that has non-zero transition probabilities and uh, that has a stationary distribution which we want to sample from, then no matter where we start, if we simulate our Markov chain long enough, we will uh, get eventually samples from the desired distribution pi.